Let's bring in Michael McConnell to elaborate on some of the implications of the decision. He's a professor at Stanford University in California and a former federal judge. Michael, thanks for joining us. So, you know, a, lo to be here. a lot of changes just within the last couple of hours. Regarding the courts, the president said just a short time ago that there won't be an immediate Supreme Court appeal, which is a big change from what he tweeted last night as see you in court. So what's happened here? Well, the big change today is that the full court, uh, not just the three-judge panel, but the full Ninth Circuit, called for additional briefing on uh, whether there should be rehearing and bank of the decision. So uh, that throws all of this into a, a new degree of confusion. So what's going to happen next? Well, the next thing that's going to happen is both sides will file briefs uh, regarding uh, the legalities of the three-judge panel's uh, decision. But I think something else is probably going to happen, too, which is that the administration may well uh, take back th that first in, uh, executive order and substitute one that is slightly narrower and more legally bulletproof. If, whether or not they do or don't do that, um, wouldn't the original ban likely expire regardless of what happened with all the legal wrangling, say it did go to the Supreme Court? I mean, it could just expire. You mean the original, the uh, original executive order? It exactly. Was, the it original does provide for order. only, it, it does provide for only a, a few months moratorium uh, during which the administration is going to be looking at uh, improved vetting uh, procedures. So it is quite possible that they'll do that uh, during these month period, these several month period, and that the court decisions will uh, <laughs> will be slower uh, than that. Um, one of the things that I think has not gotten a sufficient attention is just how narrow uh, the Ninth Circuit panel's conclusion about unconstitutionality was. Uh, that although the TRO, the, the restraining order, uh, blocks the entire executive order, uh, the Ninth Circuit panel only found uh, uh, unconstitutionality under the Due Process Clause with respect to two or possibly four relatively small classes of alien. And as to two of those, the administration doesn't even disagree. So there's actually a lot of room here uh, for the administration to modify the order and come into conformity with what the Ninth Circuit has said. So how successful do you think they would be if they were to rewrite something, as you mentioned, something narrower? Could that still trigger lawsuits from various parties, various states? Anything they do is going to trigger lawsuits from, uh, from parties and states. That's a guarantee. Uh, now, whether those lawsuits are meritorious is another question. All right. And, and last question, do you think that the ban went beyond the powers of the presidency? Did, or did, do you think it fell within his discretion? Uh, the Washington State Attorney General uh, said it did not. Uh, I, it, it's quite clear that the president has the authority to, uh, to prevent any class, that's the words in the statute, any class of alien. Uh, from entering the country if he finds that their entry would be deleterious uh, to the national welfare. The problem, to the extent there was a problem with the executive order, is that it was written too broadly, and thus uh, it, it was, could be interpreted to apply uh, to some people who are already in the United States, like green card holders or people with, uh, uh, with visas who might like to return to another country and come back, students, for example. I don't think that was ever the intention of the executive order, but it was written broadly. And that, I think, has it first led to all the confusion in the airports. It has led to a great deal of fright, uh, fright and, uh, un and misunderstanding uh, in the uh, immigrant community. And it has produced this uh, uh, series of uh, legal uh, challenges. All right, Michael McConnell, thank you so much for joining us from California.